Welcome back everyone to another video. Today we're playing some Hearts 4 and we're going to be playing the Arms Against Tyrant DLC which just launched today. And there's four new focus trees for Finland, Sweden, Norway and Denmark. I'm going to be playing as Norway though because I think it's going to be the most interesting due to the Soviet Union here on the right. There are two old, two new features I would say which are probably most prevalent. You've got the international market which allows you to buy and sell guns. I haven't really used them, don't really know how it actually works really yet. And then we have obviously the military organizations, which before you just click buy a thing and it would give you a bit of a buff. Now you actually have like different types and uh, you got trees for them. So they actually give you benefits and all this. And to get points, I think it's points, yeah. Wait, you just get from daily funds and stuff. Yeah, obviously I haven't, I don't really know much about this yet because of it is like my first time hopping in and haven't really learned. But I have played one game as Denmark, just you know, test out the water a bit. But yeah, I don't really know exactly how um, how all of these brand new systems work. Like if I research this, now we get this. We can uh, use this, which actually speeds up the thing. It does cost us a bit of political power though. But then also when we finish it, we will able to uh, get one trade point for... Um, what, what do you call it? We get one trade point for the, the organization, which allows us to make it even stronger so we get a bigger buff in the future. Let's put all of our divisions on the Soviet border because of uh I think they are gonna be our number one threat probably. Yeah, if you did see I am going to go down the right wing policies, which is the fascist route. There's a lot of other routes you can go. You can go the communist, the neutral way, which is democratic, or obviously the fascist way. So I'm gonna go this way because I feel like yeah, I feel like this is a good area when I look die. It should also allow us to obviously go after the Soviets or defend against them. I feel like one of my main goals might be to try and proclaim the Nordic was that unity but well we'll have to see if uh, i were able to do that because i'm not really sure like with all the focus trees and how hard it's gonna be because i remember they finland only has 3.8 million people which is not really a lot for any really conquests in a way but once we get this national unity on we'll be able to get more fascist and get the guy for it which then we will use for this because the more support we have but the better chances of um Winning this upcoming civil war will, uh, will be here. So uh, now I need to look into this area over here. I feel like these two is quite good to get because you can get a lot, quite a good amount of infrastructure. And afterwards, you can get two uh, two civilian factories. I mean, which is pretty good. Oh, yeah, here's our first straight point. I like this one here because you get the fence. But yeah, we'll grab this. Obviously, I think as you do a lot more, you obviously will get more and more points. Oh, yeah, one thing which is also quite nice they've added, I don't know if it, I'm pretty sure this is new. Don't remember in the game, you now have special forces, you have focus trees for them all. So you have the mountaineers, marines and paratroopers, you have focus trees for them all, which I think is really nice. Because I don't remember them having their own focus trees, I might be mistaken, but I don't remember it. Uh, I just finished that industrial, now we do have a lot more industrial things we can grab, but I kind of also now want to go for the military budget. We do also have this whole form of the Nordic Council thing, I'm not really sure how you get this, yeah, I think we have to be in alliance together, actually if we... Once we do this, I think we should have to create a line, so we might be able to go down this route. Which would have to be really good. I'm not really sure how uh, how beneficial this whole tree because I think this whole thing on the right, this whole Nordic Council tree, is all part of... I think every Nordic country gets it, this new DLC. Oh, so nice uh, new addition, Iceland. Iceland's now its own country. Actually, Iceland also has its own focus, Iceland does. Gee, that's something that I could play uh, some other day, <laughs> play Iceland. Because they're, they are an independent country, they are a dominion. Actually, this one's really good. 70 days, we get one civilian factory, one military factory, six steel. That's like left and the right combined, we get that. That's pretty good. I should also grab this, these two, because these two will give us... Seems to be a lot of forts. Which, obviously, a lot of forts against the Soviets will be good, because of uh, it is all going to be defensive for us anyway. Unless, well, if we could, like, somehow push cross over what here, like, this peninsula area. Um... Whatever this place is, I'm not really sure what's called. We could cut them off, then we have a less uh, smaller front. Plus, we have what the north arm, this bit here. So, we would have quite a bit, we would. And we'd have a small front. So, that would be good to get, but we probably won't able to push that much. Okay, trust is put back to zero, but um, he probably is going to lose it all again very fast. But at least that fall, but anyway, it gives us. Actually, we can get secure the military. That will give us. But more during the Civil War, we'll be stronger, that's what I'm just going to say. So this deal is going to be really helpful because, yeah, we don't really have any sort of resources. Well, we do have resources, but very little. As in, we got, what, 13 steel and 2 chromium, and that's it. That is literally our whole country's uh, national resources. 
Right, let's go have the final Cooper operations thing. That means now our Cooper operations are all solid. We got the guns, we got the well, support of the military and middle class. So, uh, I guess there's only one really thing, and that is to really do this focus and see how well it goes. Um, yeah, change of property, fascism, 10%. We already, we're about to overtake. I might do one more focus, which maybe I might do the defensive lines. Just, you know, we also get a Finnish army by maximum entrenchment. Hopefully that will expand our front lines or fortifications. Currently, it's just we've got a lot in the south. Oh, we've got more support, actually, with Titan support. How's the front, how does the fortifications, oh, wait, we've just got more there now, it seems. I don't, yeah, well, these fortifications are just like stuck around here. I guess if they push towards our core from the, from the east, they will run into a lot of fortifications around here, but they could just go around the top, I guess, to avoid it. But I think it's time now to, you know, get this civil war on the road and see how well we do. All right, here we go. The civil war has started. We got nine divisions. I'm not really sure how good that is. But they got four to 15. We do have more factories, though. The issue is I don't know if we can really hold the line. Don't really feel like we have enough of that. Actually, we do have a bigger navy, actually, though. One thing that would help us a lot is if we were to get support from, like, at least the Italians or the Germans. If we could get, like, volunteers from one of them, I'm pretty sure this would go way easier. But maybe if I offer them dock and writing of them both, at least then they, uh, well, they can then go all the way up to the Soviet border and stuff with their ships. But yeah, my plan is try and take... Well, try and pick off like one division at a time. Maybe that might like allow us to pick off some of the divisions and you know what, well, make it so they have less divisions so then we actually have more. Okay, that is one division knocked out. Apparently we'll have three to ten, so I max only have one more division on us. So if we can maybe encircle some we might have to be able to like, you know, pick off even more of them. Yeah, if you do this see, yeah, pick them off like this. Well, these two again is circling up. I can pick a thumb to her. Yeah, that would be massive. I think we must have more divisions because we only got we only see four divisions. Only four divisions I see. So we must have more. Unless they're like hiding them all. Yeah, no way they have more divisions because of like we've we've walked all the way up here and we have no resistance. I think to find divisions, all three of them are literally just sitting over here. Which is not too bad, I would say. Oh wait, no, there is one. There's one right here. It's just sitting there. Oh, and we got an extra division. I think that's the one I created. All right, there we go. The war is over. We get their guns and stuff. We do have 13 divisions. Actually, we had less than before. We had 18 before the war. Now we're down to 13, which is not good for when the Soviets arrive. When it's, uh, we will get, what was that, six more once we finish this uh, faction. I don't know how good the units are going to be, but I guess we'll have, we'll have 19 divisions on the border. I want to aim for 24 to have on the border to hold them off. There's a oh, German Reich is justifying against us. Why is a German Reich justifying against us? No bloody idea. Oh, actually, it could be because of um. Wait, is this us? So, yeah, I have been working on this faction of Soviet de oh, Soviet demands. Um, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna go and let them um, try and invade us. You know, to be honest, I don't really feel like we're gonna be strong enough. But you never know. <laughs> you really never know. Oh, there we go. Get them under ours. I know our banner. How many divisions do we have? We got 14, 14, and I got 27. But they do they do have a lot more factories than us. Never get Latvia and Lithuania and Denmark on our side. We're gonna be a pretty strong faction, I would say. Okay, well, the Soviets are coming. Cut cut them down to numbers. When the war mobilization speed 85%. Cooper population 3%, with attrition minus 10, defense on core territory plus 10%. Okay, so pushing the Soviets and occupying Leningrad will allow us to demand peace negotiations. Ah, uh, bother them all in. Um, division wise, we're fucked, and uh, military, well, actually, factory wise, we're not actually too far behind, to be honest. Oh, yeah, Stone. Well, actually, Stone, you only have two areas they can go into. I guess that diverts some of the, the divisions away. Yeah, if we got Latvia, I think they probably die quick. Oh my god, our troops might have screwed us up a bit here because of, um, I don't know why, they keep, like, moving people in and out away from Leningrad, and they just capture some of our forts now because of the guys keep moving back in and out. It's a bit on how it's taken them quite a long time. Hmm, we are getting pushed back a bit. I mean, we, we've lost 31,000, they've lost, like, 4,000 lives. 
Okay. Yeah, the annoying thing is, we I feel like we could have gone land guard at one point, but they just kept moving divisions, I mean. Why is this all left open? This is the thing which annoys me with this game sometimes is like, they, unless you have like tons of divisions, they leave gaps open like this. Like, we got three divisions there, yeah, like move some down. Like, like North looks very secure. Yes, yeah, so the North looks stable and secure. It's just the South. The South, we need to stabilize the front lines or either way, they're going to get a vital break for us at some point, I would say. So I've just decided to push and they're actually... Actually, it is greens, which is very interesting. Oh, another German Reich has declared war on Norway. Yeah, it's like, why are they moving this guy over up there when we need guys down in the south? Desperate. Yeah, they're not even moving anyone down here, which is annoying, where we, we actually need people. But uh, I've sort of obviously given a bit up on the north. But my plan is, if we can go quick enough, we actually might have to get to Leningrad. If... We are pushing in areas, but I'm not really sure how this is going, to be honest. We're actually making some big pushes now. I just want to, you know, secure, re-secure this sort of southern area. And also, if we do that, we should be able to make the line smaller. It shouldn't be as big of a front line. If we can, like, bring it back to where it was, like, around here. The sort of north, actually, uh, Sweden actually is able to defend it, it seems. To be as bad as I was looking for, obviously, the German Reich has taken over. that. Luckily, we didn't bring all of us in, or... Yeah, if we were all brought into that, yeah, I don't know what the chance would have been of us winning out, but well, especially against the Soviet Union at the same time. Uh, actually, I'm making some pushes here again. It's slowing down a bit, but... Okay, the Soviets have kind of split us up. Oh, wait, maybe that's why Jim and Reich have kind of swooped into that. Yeah, we've kind of been encircled from behind. Not really what I wanted. Oh, now they've double thinged us. Okay, yeah. This is circle, man. <laughs> like, I don't even know how we're still alive. Like, oh, there you go. We just died. And now I think we're watching the Soviets, aren't we? Okay, so we are alive, but we are literally playing as a communist. Wait. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, wait, what tree do we use now? Well, we still got the same tree. I wonder if we could try and break into pen. And I think because we had a faction and everything, I think that's what, like, stopped us from, like, white peace and stuff. We're a bit of our territory, though. <laughs> More than... Originally, plus obviously we're now a puppet, and Sweden is. Obviously, we've got the shitty part of Norway. Uh, but yeah, I think we might call it a day then, because of, obviously, yeah. I think this, well, today was just going to be a video to just to look at the new DLC and see what was going on. Maybe in the future I might come back. I, do, I actually do enjoy the DLC, like, because of, well, these four countries up here, the Nordic countries. I've always, like, really enjoyed them, but they've never had their own focus tree, so it's like... You can't really do much with them, or well, at least for me anyway, because it's like they don't really have the manpower to really fight any of the other big neighbours like Germany or Russia. Unless you obviously form like the Nordic Union, whatever it is, then you can get like, I think it's like 16 million man or free like population, which 16 million is still not even that much when you compare to like Germany, Russia, or even the UK, France, Italy. So it's still not even that much, but yeah. I didn't draw, obviously, I haven't really tried this out yet, I don't really know how this really works. Like, I, I did put guns be up before, but nothing really happens, or at least when I played it, I don't know if you have to do something else. I do kind of, well, I don't know, the, the new system with this, it kind of just feels like just a random extra thing to do, really. I, I don't know, it just doesn't really feel like there's much else to it, so it's just been more in-depth, another tree to just click on and do stuff on. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's videos. If you did enjoy, just put a like, comment, and yeah, I'll see you all next time. So, cheerios.